Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Latanis, Penelope Kristen, Arinda, Patricia, Eddie, Sandra, uh, Kenya, good morning. Come on in. Uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. You and I should rejoice, listen, and be glad in it. I'm telling you, it's a good day to be alive in the kingdom of God. Go ahead and take this opportunity to uh, love and share, uh, share this message uh, that I'm sure will be a blessing uh, to you if you are new to the Faith Fort uh, broadcast and family. Certainly, I invite you to put your name and your location. Uh, we want to love on you as we do each other each week. Kayana, Martina, uh, uh, Vanessa. Lala, good to see you. Tina, good to see you. Come on in. Uh, my dear brother, uh, Pastor Baylor, good to see you. While we are waiting for all to come on, go ahead and grab those Bibles. We will be today in the book or the gospel of Mark. Mark's gospel. Good morning, uh, Lady Keturah. Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. He is... The ruler of everything, isn't he? Oh my God. If you have not already, go ahead and take this opportunity to lift up your hands and give God thanks for his many blessings that he has bestowed upon you. Oh, you didn't have to be here this morning. You haven't been that good. You haven't been that faithful. But it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions faileth not. They are new to us every morning, and great is his faithfulness. I want you to go ahead and get that word. We're going to the book of Mark, chapter number 11. Mark 11. Mark, chapter 11. I really want you to see um, this word today. So when you have uh, the word, you know to put in the comments, I have the word. Good to see my dear friend, Pastor Clarence Sellers, on this morning. Uh, when you have the word, I want you to put in the comments, I have the word. Thank you, uh, Kayana. Mark chapter 11, and we will start uh, or commence reading at verse number 12. L listen to how Mark sets this up. You have that word, Eva and Doris. Amazing. Listen. And on tomorrow, and on the morrow is what the King James Version uh, says. When they were come to Bethany, he was hungry, okay? They being the 12 disciples and Jesus. Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, Jesus came. If happily he might find anything thereon and when he came to it he found nothing listen but leaves i could really stop right there when he came to it he found nothing but leaves i'm, I'm gonna say it again when he came to the tree he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet. In other words, it wasn't the season for figs. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of these hereafter, of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. This is, and um, I love it too, Pastor Clarence. This is amazing, an amazing text. I, I want to talk today, um, have a conversation with you uh, from the subject, living beyond the leaves. Living 
beyond the leaves. We know that the word of God is already blessed. I, I want to take you on the journey here because um, we often can find ourselves in some uh, degree in every scripture. All right. We ought to be able to find ourselves, whether we're the protagonist or the antagonist or or just um, able to identify and associate with a person or persons in a, a biblical text. When we uh, approach the scene of this text, Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Bethany. We would we would find ourselves or find Jesus in his triumphant entry. OK, um, previous or prior to this actual scene, Jesus have told the disciples, I want you uh, to go into Bethany. And um, as soon as you get to the village, you're going to find a colt tied. Listen to how Jesus sets this up. You better stay with me because this is going to get really, really good, really, really quickly. You're going to find a colt um, tied. What you're supposed to do is loose the colt and bring him to me. And if anybody tries to stop you, from doing what I've told you to do, then your response should be that the Lord hath need of it. Listen to what Jesus tells the disciples um, just to, he tells them if anybody tries to check you about doing what I called you to do or told you to do or commissioned you to do, your assignment is to tell them, wait, hold up. Don't check me. The Lord have need of this cult. You know the story. I'm not going to be long today, but he, he rides into um, the city. They're crying holy. They're, 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 they're um, saying phrases like blesses that blesses is he who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Help us is literally what that means. Jesus enters into Jerusalem. Now, this is according to Mark. We also see this in Matthew, but uh, I really like Mark's version. He, he gets to Bethany with the 12. And the Bible says that the next day when he comes to Bethany, Jesus is hungry. Now, sometimes we forget that although Jesus is God and God is Jesus, they're one. Um, we often forget that Jesus has these, these needs as well. The Bible says that Jesus, Sandra, is hungry. He's hungry. You know how you are when you're hungry. Okay? He's hungry. And the Bible says, listen, that Jesus sees a fig tree afar off having leaves. Now, I have to set this up for us because Jesus is in need. He sees the source of his sustenance. He, he's, he's happily... He's happy to come to find something that would fulfill him. He's already been fulfilled with the cult because what he asked for previously was granted to him with no problem. Are you listening? I'm going to make it make sense. Jesus is on a winning streak because Everything that he has asked for previously has abided by the assignment. Everything that Jesus had desired prior to this moment was aligned with his will. Jesus now, the text says that he is hungry. Good to see you, Lois. Thank you for watching. He's hungry. He sees a fig tree afar off. But the clincher is this. The tree has leaves. I 
told you that the gospel writers set these scenarios up in a way for us to really engage what Jesus was experiencing or whoever the subject of the text is. He sees a fig tree, very specific, afar off having leaves. Jesus is happy about that because Jesus figures if the tree has leaves, then there should be some fruit. Jesus is happy because he's hungry. And you know, when you're hungry, let's say you're traveling on 95 and you see the sign that says McDonald's and Hardee's and Chick-fil-A and Food Lion. You're hungry. So you take the exit expecting for that which is neglected to be fulfilled. You get to the McDonald's. I don't know if I should say the, the name of the franchise here. You get to the establishment and you want ice cream. And the server tells you that the ice cream machine is broken. No, you don't understand. You, you don't understand, ma'am. I had my heart set, my mouth set on what I wanted. You advertised on the exit that you would be open. And when I get to the place where what I desire is at my fingertips, now I'm disappointed because what I expected will not be fulfilled. Jesus gets to the fig tree and there are no figs. Jesus gets to the thing. He gets to the person. He gets to the church. He gets to the worship center. He gets to Patricia. He gets to Martina. He gets to Eva. He gets to Sandra. He gets there expecting, listen, to eat of that which had been advertised to produce and he finds nothing but leaves. Oh my God. Jesus is baffled by this. In fact, he's disappointed by it. Same as you. He's, he's, he's somewhat concerned because uh, Jesus being God knows that everything that was prepared in Genesis is, is still supposed to be functioning even in the time in which he was living. I'm going to make it make sense. If you stay with me, I promise you, we're going we're gonna to have a shout. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Uh, verse 11. And God said that the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind. Whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And when God spoke it, it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind and tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after its kind. And God saw it and it was good. So there's an expectation of the tree. There is an expectation. This, this isn't Peter going to the tree. This isn't Matthias going to the tree. This isn't Paul going to the tree. This is Jesus, whom the text says is hungry and there's nothing to sustain Jesus but leaves. Jesus has just much of a need of you 
that you have of him. We are that tree. You and I are that tree that should be planted. Listen, by the river of water. That's what David said. And, and he shall be like a tree. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You're going to have to stay with me today because I feel like teaching this. And somebody is going to get blessed because there is an expectation of you as the tree. But the Bible says he comes to Doris. He comes to Keturah. He comes to Arinda. He comes to Patricia. And there's nothing but leaves. He's, he's, he's looking for productivity. He's looking for what he spoke in the beginning and there's nothing, Pastor Sellers, help me out. There's nothing. It looks good. Your prayer life looks good. Your worship life is amazing. Oh, you can dance. You can outdance everybody in the church. You speak in tongues. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, you didn't miss one Sunday. During the pandemic, you were outside, you went in, you got vaccinated, you did all that you, but, 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 but all of those things are leaves. What, 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 what Jesus is looking for is something that has been planted in you that, that, that is expected to come forth. Well, the Bible says that Jesus comes to this tree, this fig tree, this, this tree that has been ordained. We, we saw the fig tree in the garden of Eden. No, your leaves were good enough to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. But when Jesus needs fruit off the same tree, he finds none offensive. I, I, I'm sure Jesus was quite offended because he is expecting for Eva and, and Arenda to have some fruit. But the text said that the time of the figs was not yet. That's a great excuse, Mark. And I'm so glad that you put that in there because sometimes we make the excuse that it's not my season. You know, we're, we're real churchy. And uh, we'll make our situation about a season all we want to. You got to understand that the season of ripened figs was between May and June. It was between, they were supposed to be active between May and June. But, but the Jewish holiday, the calendar would put us at this place somewhere between late March and early April. So it is a good excuse because according to the calendar of life, the figs were not supposed to be in season. Oh, but this isn't just anybody that needs some. You, you can no longer use this is not your season as an excuse not to produce what God has for you to do. I'm going to let that sit there right there. Stop using the season as an excuse not to be able to give Jesus what he wants. This isn't Paul. No, Sandra, this isn't Bartholomew that is asking for figs. No, this isn't your boss that's needing extra time. No, this isn't your spouse who's craving your attention. No, this is Jesus who has come to you expecting, and here you are suggesting that is not your season. Listen, when God has something that he needs from you, it's always your season. 
The moment you woke up this morning was a declaration that it's your season. Oh, you may not have a license. They may not have given you your papers, but the fact that you woke up this morning, the fact that you have survived literally the worst time of your life, the worst year of your life, you don't need a license when every day is your season. Jesus hath needed, he, he needed the coat that, that came through. The coat wasn't supposed to be there unattended either. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The coat wasn't supposed to be there either, but it was there at the speaking and the declaration of Jesus. Now Jesus gets to the tree. The coat has delivered, but now he gets to the tree and there's nothing but leaves. But, but the text says that it was because the tree was out of season. No, that's not a good excuse for you, Martina. And that that's not a good excuse for you because if God allowed you to live through COVID-19, some of you had COVID-19 and now you're going to get on the other side of the most deadly virus that you've ever experienced in your lifetime. And the reason that you're going to give Jesus is because it's not your season to produce. Because somebody won't support you. Oh, because um, they don't like you. That's your excuse for having no figs. I want you to take a moment and I want you to rehearse some of the things that you've told God. And I want to see you make um, the decision. Is, is this a valid excuse when Jesus is coming to you for something that he, oh, we're good with giving him praise. Oh, let everything that have, oh, we know how to praise. We, oh, we can tear it down. But what, 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 what is it? What, what do you do when God is calling you to, to minister to other people that have been through what you've been through? Where, where, where is, where, where, where is that fig when God is calling you to step out and come out of the background and step into the forefront? But, but you say, I don't, I don't have, I don't have the push that you have. I don't have the confidence that you have. I don't have the money that you have. Jesus says, I, I, I didn't ask you that. I saw leaves from afar. Come on, Sister Cheryl. I, I saw leaves on you. So if I saw leaves on you, anything that have leaves has the potential to produce fruit. If you got life in your body, that's a leaf. Glory to God. I'm preaching so good today, but some people are not going to get it because I'm not telling you that you're going to get a house and I'm not telling you and promising you a new car. I'm not promising you. I, 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 we did new now a couple of weeks ago and we thank God for that. But now that you got your new God is coming to you to see if you've got any evidence of life beyond your leaves. Jesus can't eat leaves. Jesus won't be sustained off of your pretty face. Jesus won't be sustained off of your Facebook numbers. No, are you producing that which God placed on the inside of you to produce? You can't keep using the season as an excuse not to produce all that God, he has need of you. I said, okay, well, you know, what else? Why else? Um, you know, we've got a good excuse about the leaves not, you know, or, or the figs not being in, in season. <laughs> but I, 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 
I, I examined the text a little bit more and I said, well, perhaps there are no figs on the tree because the tree has allowed everybody else to eat, eat of the figs for so long. And now when Jesus needs it, you all out. Maybe that's a theory. Maybe the, the tree had some fruit. Maybe, just maybe, this tree with the leaves had some figs. But maybe, just maybe, this tree was available to everybody else. And when it was time for Jesus to use the tree, everything had been plucked from the tree. Maybe we give so much of ourselves to people and to things and we allow depression to come upon us and eat our fruit. We work so hard in the church and we give so much to our jobs and we give so much to our children and our spouse and we're trying to build an empire. We're trying to make sure that the kids have the Jordans and we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that we're climbing the, uh, uh, the ladder of success. But, but all the time, there are things that are plucking the figs off of us and we don't even know it. We, 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 we're giving our all to everybody. We're, we're a jack of all trades, master of none. And, and, and because we're giving ourselves to the ministry, we think we're, you know, something working in church and, and being available to God are not always synonymous. Sometimes you can be busy because that's the family business. Sometimes you can be busy working in the church because that's the only time you have power. Sometimes we can be busy working in the church because that's the only people that really listen to us and it becomes an ego stroker. But, but all the while we're allowing other people to pluck and pluck and pluck and pluck the fruit off of, off of us. But when Jesus really needs you to come through, when Jesus really needs your prayer life, when, when Jesus really needs you to go to the nursing home, you, you don't have any energy to do that because you've allowed everything and everybody to pluck the figs off of you. And when Jesus comes, there are no more figs. We know that that may be the case because Jesus talks to the tree and says nobody else is going to eat from this fruit. Glory to God. I'm not making this up. He says, okay, you're available to everybody. You got time. For everybody else, you're giving your, your pearls to swine. You're, you're making sure that everybody else is straight. But that which I placed on the inside of you is, is, is lacking. He says, okay, nobody else. I, I'm going to make it so. Now, what are you saying? I'm saying to you today, ladies and gentlemen, is that your leaf living has to come to an end. God is calling you. Glory to God. Am I, I y'all pray for me cuz I'm entering into a prophetic space here where I have to challenge the people of God because we want God to use us but we're not really available. We want God to take us to the next level but really we're not really available. Our minds are not available because we're still, uh, you know, we're still fantasizing over what happened 10 years ago. And God says, for what I need you to produce in the earth, you got to be able to detach yourself from your past. I'm not telling you to be ignorant because you can really use handled properly. You can use your past as a source of your testimony. But we don't want that because we don't want people to know our business. 
And so we hang around the church with leaves, but we never produce what really is in God's heart. The Bible says Jesus was hungry. God wants just as much from you as he, oh, you don't think God needs you? You don't think God needs you? He says, listen, if these don't praise me, I'll cause the rock. I, you, I think it was Beyonce said, listen, don't, don't you ever for a second get to thinking that you're irreplaceable. Don't you think that a rock cannot be produced to take your place? My challenge is if God allowed you to survive COVID-19, and many of you have had it. Praise God, I didn't, I haven't had it, you know, as you know, a clinically diagnosed. But come on, people, God preserved you for a reason. And he did not preserve you just to produce leaves. God is saying to you today, it's time to go beyond. Well, I don't know how to go. Everything that God has placed in your heart, you already know it's there. Don't give me that. Oh, I got to be hard on you today as I'm hard on myself. Because God had to check me. Sometimes we get so disappointed. We get so discouraged. And we tell God what we're not going to do. There's an arrogance in unfruitfulness. I got more. I got some more. I'm just, I'm just, did you hear what I said? There is an arrogance to unfruitfulness. That is an arrogance to God preserving you for such a time as this. And you rise up as a tree and say, I'm not doing that. That tree was talking to Jesus. Oh, you don't think that tree was talking to Jesus? The Bible says that Jesus answered. I'm in verse 14. The tree was making a really big statement by not having fruit and not being productive and not doing what God called it to do. The tree was making a statement. Oh, it's a statement when you don't do what God has called you to do. I don't care for what reason. You know what? We got to live beyond people. You got to, you got to move and I'm, I'm well over my time. Give me, give me six more minutes and I promise. Well, I won't promise, but I'll try to be done. We, 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 we do well with, um, this whole idea of people holding us back. I suffered from that too. We got this whole thing, you know, you, when you were in the world, nobody could touch you and mess with you. But now you get in the church or you come into Christ rather, and you become this shy, timid, I'm afraid, I'm scared. No, Jesus, the, the boys had, where one text says they went to get meat. Jesus didn't want any meat. He wanted fruit. If you weren't going to be productive, Jesus could have said, y'all bring me a hamburger back. So now you got Jesus out here with nothing to eat because he expected you to produce. We, we, we've got, we, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta come back to the place. <clears throat> I got to talk more about this, this tree talking to Jesus because the Bible says in verse 14 that Jesus answered and said unto it. So the tree had to make a statement. I'm going to talk about, talk about that. The, the tree had to have made a statement. I don't know if the tree talked. I don't know what the tree said to Jesus, but I'm telling you today that unproductivity, unfruitfulness is a statement to God. You wouldn't catch me have had COVID and I'm still having excuses about why I can't produce. And I don't need that challenge, Lord. You wouldn't catch me have survived COVID and I'm still living in depression about what somebody did to me. 
You wouldn't catch me. Other people died with what you had mild symptoms of and you still need someone to affirm you and, and push you and, and stroke your ego and tell you how called you are and how wonderful you are. Listen, the fact that you survived 2020 is a stroke to your ego. The fact that you survived 2020 is affirmation that you're anointed. The, the fact that you survived not being able to breathe, being dizzy. Listen, the fact that you able, you're able to have your smell and your taste, that's all the affirmation you need. This tree answered, uh, uh, spoke, spoke to Jesus and Jesus answered the tree back and said, okay, you cute. That's cute. But Jesus says to the tree, you have potential. And this is, this is really a, this is a really a parable of, you know, rejecting Jesus and, and how, um, <clears throat> the, the end time one's end could be. He, Jesus talks about this parable in, I believe it's John or Luke. And he talks about the parable about how he goes to the tree three times. And for three times, a tree didn't bear any fruit. And the farmer said, listen, we'll give it another year. No, you, you don't, you may not have another year. So Jesus cursed the tree. He says, no man shall eat of the fruit of this tree forevermore. And check this out. And the disciples heard it the disciples heard it i'm telling you today that your season of living safe is over i'm challenging you today to stop living in the safeness of the leaves you have so much in you. you. You know what you've been called to do. You've been dreaming about it since you were a kid. God says to you today, step it up. Oh, some of you have started the business. But God says to you, that's just leave. That's just leaf living. No, God wants you to move beyond the leaves. Am I talking to, am I helping anybody? Maybe, maybe this is not. I'm just trying to provoke you today. I'm just trying to tell you today that there is more in you. And God, just as that cult, God needs everything that's in you. Oh my God. Oh, he needs the book that's in you. He needs the song that's in you. He needs the ministry that's in you. And sometimes this is not even about you doing pulpit ministry. Sometimes God is looking for you to have moved beyond the disappointment. Sometimes it's internal work that God is looking for the fruit of. God, God, God is looking for you now to move beyond that which have hurt you and has stifled you and, and, and that which have caused you to live a life of low self-esteem and, and being intimidated. God is saying to you, what is holding you back from producing figs when I am hungry for you? Just as the deer panteth after the water brook, my soul pants after you. But the text says that Jesus came looking for fruit from the tree. I'm going to close on this. I'm going to close on this. Because the celebration is this. Verse 20 says that in the morning they came and they saw the tree had dried up from the root. So there was a potential there. There was a potential there to produce. There was, you've got the potential. You have what it takes. No, 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 no. I know you were abused. I know you, you. You, you were raped and, and, and I don't want to trigger anything by saying that. I don't want to take you back there. But I, I, you've got all the excuses. But 
God says to you today, I, I, I want to, I want to push you to your next level. I know you don't feel like it's your season. It's somebody else's season. You're seeing what's happening for other people. God says to you today, you, God bless you, Eddie. God bless you for that seed. You, 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 you can produce just as much as anybody else. Oh, it may not be your season. Well, sometimes it may not be your season, but you can still do something so that when your season comes around, you'll be ready. The Bible says, <laughs> I'm telling you, I know this tree um, denied Jesus because Peter says, in, he says he's calling to remembrance what the master said. Behold, the tree which thou hast cursed is withered away. And Jesus says unto them, have faith in God. For whatsoever or whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he hath said it shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. What are you saying? I'm saying that there, it, the problem is not speaking. The problem is the rejection. Jesus spoke to the tree, but the tree rejected. That's why Jesus answered the tree and said, okay, you like just living with leaves. And I'm closing the book. You're okay with just having leaves. Jesus answered the tree and said, okay. Okay. You're okay living like that. But God says, okay. I'm not going to keep coming back to this tree expecting you to produce what, what I said. At some point, you know, some point grace runs out. We don't want to talk about that because it, it doesn't tickle our fancy. But at some point, the grace that God have extended to us, it's going to run out. We're not going to live forever. You and I, as much as we want to, we're every day there's something new. There's some, some, someone who has, you and I are not going, I want to spend the rest of my life producing what it is. That's too much on the inside of you to live like a leaf. Gabriella, Penelope, Latoya, John Lewis Reed. There's too much in you to keep leaf living. God is pushing you and I to a place. Oh, I'm telling you that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Don't be satisfied existing with just leaves when God, I'm closing, when God is calling you to a higher place. Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. But what higher place of praise what greater praise it would be than when God comes to me, when he comes looking for Sharita, when he sends somebody to me for an encouraging word that I don't give them a depressed word because I'm in depression, but I give them a word of edification, a word in season, instant. And I, what, what greater praise is it to God? When, when we are that tree that's planted by the water that bringeth forth much fruit, what, what greater praise? I'm not talking about your dance. Yes, that, that, that produces bodily exercise. Yes, that's awesome. God wants your dance. But what better praise would it be when someone who is homeless, someone who has been through trauma, someone who, 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 who is confused and, and does, don't know who they are, don't know what they are. They come to you and you're able to give them fruit, the fruit of the spirit. Oh, you ought to have some fruit if you're walking in the spirit. You want to have some love. I told you, this is not just producing external works. This is not about just producing, you know, having a business sprout up. Yeah, that's included. But, but there ought to be some fruit of the spirit in you. People ought to see love in you. You want to have some joy sometime. Oh my God, I'm closing. You want to have some joy sometime. Challenge your 
yourself? Are you walking in the fruit of the spirit or are you just leaf living? <laughs> yeah, there could have been some fruit there, but her circumstances plucked all that off. His past, uh, his record plucked all that off. He don't have no joy because, you know, that woman took his children. Okay, you handle that the best way you can. But when Jesus comes for you, when, 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 when God is looking for evidence of his spirit working in you, you ought to have some joy. You ought to have some get up and go. You ought to be able to live in peace. Love, joy, peace. Aren't these the fruit of the spirit? Or maybe you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you ought to have some peace. Somebody needs to lift up your hands and say, God, fill me again. Refill me with your spirit so that I can have some peace. Refill me with your spirit so that I can have some joy. Refill me with your spirits, your spirit so that I can have some long suffering. Refill me with your spirit. God bless you, Eva Clark, for your seed. Fill me with, with, with your spirit. So that I can have some patience. Fill me with your spirit. So that when people come to me with their messiness and their nastiness, I can still be kind. Because you're looking for a tree that's bearing fruit. It may not, you may not be in a good mood, but it's always a good season to be kind. Oh, you dance, but you're not kind. Dance, I don't think, has ever been a fruit of the spirit. Help me. I, I don't read in Galatians where, um, you know, your dance and your shout and your, your praise is a fruit of the spirit. Everything that has breath has an obligation to praise is not necessarily a fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Oh my God, you got the spirit, but you can't be faithful to nothing. Gentleness, self-control, temperance. That's the fruit that God is looking for from you and I. He's looking for that fruit and he's looking for you to produce. Back in Genesis, he calls you, he tells you to produce he tells you to take dominion, subdue, have dominion of the earth. That's the fruit that God is looking for. I'm telling you today, I, I, I know this wasn't a shouting message, but if you listen to it, you're held accountable for it. I'm telling you, lift up those hands and say, Father, refill me. Fill me with the spirit so that I can have the fruit that when you come looking for me, I'll be able to give you what you need. I'll be ready to give an answer. I'll be able to lead someone else to Christ. I'll be able to produce that which you have birthed me in the earth realm to do. Father, I thank you today. I thank you today that you first of all come looking for us. We count it a privilege that you even search us out, that you even want to be in relationship and connection with us. We thank you, oh God, that we have a right to the tree of life. You, you're the tree of life. You're, you're the, 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 the prototype for it all. You're the tree of life. We're glad that we can come to you and get from you what we need. Now, Father, in this season, you're looking for us to come forth. I pray in the name of Jesus for every uh, faith forward partner, every faith forward uh, member, every faith forward viewer today. Father, reignite in them. I'm telling you, lift up your hands. Reignite in them the fire to produce. I thank you. God, there's someone on this live today, even as we close, that said, I, I, I want to be a tree. I want to bear fruit, but I want to be connected to the true vine. They don't know you in the pardoning of their sins. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would cause them to repent today of their sin. Repent of, of falling short of your glory. Accept them into the beloved today. 
Fill them with your spirit that they may live a fruitful life. This is our prayer in Jesus name. Somebody need to tell God, thank you. Oh my God. Somebody needs to shout, thank you, Jesus. Oh, sometimes the word of God finds us and challenges us and puts us on a path um, of production. Yes, I need a fire. Somebody, somebody needs a fire. You are preserved for this season to produce. Thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of Faith Forward. You're going to live beyond these leaves and produce everything that God has for you. I want to challenge you today. Everything starts with the seed. Everything starts with the seed. You don't just reap what you sow. You reap where you sow. And somebody needs, just as, as a proverbial statement, you need to plant a seed today that says today is going to be the day that I start to see fruit, not just leaves. Yes, I do some good things. But God says to you today, you ought to be able to challenge yourself to say, listen, by this time next year, my life is going to be yielding much fruit. I'm not settling for just living with leaves. I'm moving on to fruitful, fruitful, sustainable um, life in Jesus Christ. You need to plant that seed today. Uh, you see it on the screen, how you can plant that seed. You can go to Cash App. You can go to Zelle. You can go to PayPal. I just challenge you today um, to, to, to hold yourself accountable through uh, a financial uh, means, or you can write it down. You say, I don't have no money to give you. Okay, well, write it down. Put it on a sticky note and say, today is the day I'm living beyond the leaves. Do that right now. And I will see you on next week for another edition of Faith Forward with Sharita Dawson-Herring. Have a wonderful, blessed week.